Reports. As former President Trump deals with the impact of new indictments, officials on both sides of the aisle are working to investigate and eliminate politically motivated violence. The number of people who agree force is justified to restore Trump to the presidency is up to nearly 18 million American adults. Officials are predicting additional calls for violence, similar to those seen leading up to the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Robert Pape joins us now on set, professor of political science at the University of Chicago. Bob, it's good to have you here. Thank you. How much is a fourth indictment going to increase the possibility or the risk of violence? Well, with the first indict federal indictment, we already saw the violent support for Trump go up by 50 percent. In the last month, we saw a uh, threat uh, against Biden turn into a shootout uh, and a death. We saw a month before that uh, an assailant take bombs and uh, guns to Obama's house here in Washington. Um, and so what we are seeing is disturbing rises in both support for political violence and also actual threats just in the last few months. Now, uh, that is likely to go up, but it's already gone up more than I think the public really knows just in the last month, month and a half. And this is really surprising and disturbing. We don't normally have multiple threats to the president and the former president within a month of each other. Yes, they've happened before, but we're seeing them more often, more frequently, and we're also seeing, as you just reported, in our surveys at the University of Chicago, um, th uh, the support for the use of force to restore Trump to the presidency up by 50 percent. I also want to point out that the left is also becoming radical. There are tens of millions who now report that they support the use of force to prevent Donald Trump from becoming the president. Our political leaders can do something about this, and we have a great opportunity with the August 23rd Republican presidential debate. I'm going to pressure on that. I think that's 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 really the next forum so many political candidates, wannabe presidents, are going to have. I want to button up one thing. In the case outside of President Obama's home in D.C., prosecutors updated it to say no explosives in that van. Ah. Small note, but worth mentioning, because the case is still moving along in the federal courts. They have all these GOP contenders on stage in Milwaukee, Wednesday, August 23rd. What should they be asked about indictments since they're not indicted, but their competitor is? They should be asked to stand up and stand together and make a pledge that whether political violence comes from Republicans or from the left, they will oppose publicly political violence. This is important because Mike Pence will be on that stage. And if they won't take that pledge to, re to uh, reject, oppose, and abhor political violence, whether it comes from the right and the left, they should be asked, so it's okay if Trump supporters chant, hang Mike Pence, and build a gallows just yards from where he is? You had mentioned that there's a number of threatening behaviors or threatening tendencies coming from different directions. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a, everybody has a little bit of their hands dirty on this. Explain what you mean by that, because at this point, we see 1,000 plus Trump supporters charged with being part of January 6th, and we don't see a symmetrical set of threats or charges by that number and that magnitude coming against those who would be his opponents. There is a reason why we're seeing active threats from the right and not from the left. Those sentiments I talk about are like kindling in a wildfire. Trump's rhetoric is very incendiary to touch that off. President Biden's rhetoric is the opposite. He is calming. He's a calming force. In our surveys, the more people support Biden, even among the few Republicans, the less they support violence for Trump. And so what Biden has been doing for the last two years is calming, whether it's with the Supreme Court or whether, and what he's doing is he's trying to redirect the anger into voting, not into violence and agitation, whereas Trump is confrontation, confrontation. Joe Biden is, let's make our institutions even better. And that is our best way ahead. There's this sense that what happened January 6, 2021 is not plausible to happen again because everybody would be ready for it. There'll be a war footing on January 6, 2025. Where do you think, what type of event or type of moment do you think the vulnerability exists most? The biggest thing we have to worry about is lone wolf violence that is going to be extremely difficult to predict and to see. Uh, we saw this with Oklahoma City in 1996. So this was several years after Waco, and we cannot protect every possible target that um, 
the extremists could go for. And unfortunately, what we have been seeing pretty much since the first year of the Trump presidency is more domestic extremism, more domestic extremism, whether it is to support Trump or to punish people for not supporting Trump enough. And that is, uh, we saw on January 6th, explode into a crowd. That's not quite impossible to happen again, but we need to realize that uh, campaigns of domestic terrorism, say in Northern Ireland, say in West Germany, say in Spain, have happened in democracies. And what has preceded all of those campaigns? Higher support for political violence in the general population. And we also note the reporting from the U.S. Capitol Police, roughly 10,000 threat investigations they're handling each year. Robert Pape? the University of Chicago. Thanks for being here in D.C. Thank you for having me. I appreciate your time and we appreciate your watching.